moi, présent sur la ligne, Nathalie Dion, le Saint-Pierre, Sylvio Leblanc. On vous souhaite à tous la bienvenue à ce vidéoconférence organisée par Rémi 3. Alors, euh, euh, pour vous ce soir, nous allons avoir les, les sociétés suivantes. Dans un premier temps, on va avoir M. Kelly Malcolm, qui est vice-président d'exploration pour un ex-exploration, qui va nous présenter les derniers développements de la société. Et puis, dans un deuxième temps, nous allons avoir M. Richard Patricio, qui est le président de Generic Gold, qui va aussi nous présenter euh, l'avènement de la société qui est relativement euh, nouvellement listé. Et puis, euh, donc, c'est ça. Il va nous présenter les derniers développements. Alors, euh, pour les fins de la présentation, vous avez au bas de votre écran un onglet de chat. Euh, euh, dans un premier temps, on va faire les deux présentations et puis après ça, on va prendre les questions. Si pendant la présentation, vous avez une question, ne gênez-vous pas de l'entrée tout de suite dans le chat. Et puis, euh, après les présentations, avec euh, mon ami Luc, on va, euh, on, on va les les présenter à tout le monde et puis nos présentateurs vont se faire un plaisir de, de, de vous répondre. Alors, encore une fois, on vous remercie beaucoup. Si vous êtes en train de souper, bon appétit. Euh, je voulais juste dire que cette semaine, on devait être en Abitibi, mais je pense que vous connaissez les conditions. Je n'ai pas besoin d'y répéter. Euh, ce n'est qu'à partie remise parce que soyez certains qu'on s'ennuie de vous autres pour l'air de vous voir. Alors, euh, soyez safe. On est tous dans le confort de chez nous. Fait qu'on va pouvoir avoir un bel update paramètres. Guys, Annex, uh, Kelly, Wanda, and uh, Mr. Patricio, thank you very much for being with us tonight. And uh, on this, I will leave the, the, the site to Mr. Uh, Kelly Malcolm, VP Exploration of Annex Exploration. Thank you very much. Merci. Merci à tout le monde. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, very great to have you all on Zoom. I know this is a first for some, and it's, uh, it's going to be a fun one. So, Amex is a, it's a premier story in Quebec. We've done very well over the past two years, made a number of very high grade gold discoveries, uh, proximal to the town of Normatel. And I'm going to walk you through three of them. Uh, if you go to the next two slides, please. Avance. Oui. Avance. Uh, merci. So the um, corporate structure here is very tight. 82 million shares outstanding. We have $39 million of cash in the bank. We also have $13 million worth of warrants. Uh, there's 7.82 million warrants that will bring in $13 million that are very deep in the money with the highest exercise price being $2.10. So MX is fully funded uh, for, the, for the, like well into the future. Market cap around 250, 275 million dollars. Our biggest shareholder is Eric Sprott. Uh, he's participated in four placements over the past 18 months. Uh, management has a lot of skin in the game. 13% of the overall shareholdings held by management and institutional holdings around uh, 40% on top of that. So it's a really good shareholder base, broad, uh, widespread. Uh, many of you know the MX story. Um, basically traded up from a penny stock at the end of 2018 to a $2, um, $2 and, or sorry, $3 stock today. Uh, team here is comprised of Victor Cantori as president and CEO. Uh, Victor's been involved in the Quebec mining market for over 20 years, uh, structuring companies, putting management teams together, assets together, and has generated a lot of value for shareholders in his various enterprises. Uh, Jacques Trottier is the chairman of the board. He's a PhD geologist, previously founded the company Celadin Exploration. And Celadin, they basically built an artisanal mine up to 3 million ounces of gold, and that was sold in 2014 for over $600 million Canadian. Pierre Carrier, our COO and director, and I think he's on the call right now, um, is a geologist by education, but a financier by, um, through his career. He's built several TSX listed companies, including OpSense and RockTest. Our CFO, Martin Nicoletti, has been the CFO for a number of exploration companies and development companies. Uh, myself, Vice President of Exploration, I'm a geologist, previously with Detour Gold, uh, involved in a discovery there called the 58 North Gold Deposit, and got involved in the junior sector uh, following that. And I'm actually on the board of the next presenting company as well. 
Uh, Brian Coates is an independent director, past president of Osisco Gold Royalties, past CFO of Osisco Mining, uh, where they developed one of, biggest, one of Canada's biggest gold mines, Canadian Malarctic. And Brian, funnily enough, was actually born and raised in the small town that we operate our core shack out of called Norma Tell. Uh, and Nick Gendron is a securities lawyer. Uh, she's based in Montreal and serves as counsel for a number of exploration mining companies. Next slide, please. Yvonne Jelina is an accountant, runs an accounting firm based in Montreal. Uh, Andre Sharek is a real estate entrepreneur, again, based in Montreal. So we've got a really well-rounded group of both independent and independent board members with a broad set of skills and a, and a highly technical background as well. Next slide, please. Um, we're focused obviously in Quebec. Next slide, please. So our project is basically right in the town of Normatal. We are uh, highway accessible, about an eight hour drive from Montreal. Uh, many of the people on the call are from the Abitibi. Um, it's, it's an easy place to access. And that really brings down all of our exploration costs. Uh, by highway, we are close to a number of active mines and mills in the area. And if you go to the next page, you can see where we are in the Abitibi. So we're on, uh, you can see there are five different breaks. We're on the central break that we call the Shakovi deformation zone. Um, in my eyes, it's the same as the Destro Porcupine, Destro Porcupine Cadillac Larder Lake break, Sunday Lake break, Casa Barati fault zone. Uh, very similar geology, similar age, similar genesis. Uh, the only difference is there's only been one mine found so far to date, and that's the past producing Normatal mine, which is about 10 kilometers to the southeast of us. Um, the interesting thing about Normatal is it was mined from surface down to a depth of over 2.4 kilometers, and it showed really good continuity, which is exciting for us as we continue to advance our high grade uh, project to depth. Next slide, please. So um, because of infrastructure here, we have very low cost exploration, $150 Canadian all in per meter versus the industry norm of 300 to $350 per meter. Um, a lot of that is owing to being in the town of Normatal, skilled workforce, especially throughout the Abitibi, uh, low housing costs and, and great amenities. Next slide. We have a beautiful core shack that we bought um, in November of last year. 7,000 square foot facility. We are currently uh, utilizing six drills within that core shack and we're, we're on the process of upsizing to 10 and we have capacity to upsize even to 15, 20 drills if we'd like to advance uh, rapidly going forward. Next slide. So we've made four significant discoveries on the Peron project. Um, most of our work is focused on the yellow wedge in the center of the screen. We call that the Beaupre rhyolite. And the Beaupre rhyolite is a specialized rhyolite. It's sodium rich and it seems to be very amenable to hosting uh, the gold mineralization that we've been finding to date. Uh, just to the north, above the Normatel Fault, that's where the, the Normatel Mine Horizon sits. So there's VMS potential to the north as well as to the south in the Normatal South Block. Um, so our major discoveries here, Gratien Gold Zone on the west, Grey Cat Gold Zone to the north, Eastern Gold Zone to the east, and in the middle we have a VMS stringer system called the Central Polymetallic Zone. Next slide, please. So this is what we call the Peron Gold Corridor, and this is really exciting for me, especially coming from working at Detour Lake where I'm used to seeing very big, kilometric, robust gold systems. What's really exciting about this corridor is we've defined about a three kilometer by strike, 150 meters north to south, drilled down to over a kilometer depth corridor, where every single drill hole that we stick within this corridor returns at least half a gram per ton in individual assays, and many holes return significant high grade mineralization as well. So what this says to me is we have a big gold system on our hands and one of our objectives going forward is to start testing in between the known zones and trying to build up a big kilometer uh, multi-kilometer system that could be mined in a bulk tonnage manner which would be leveraged to the high price of gold 
as well as continuing to test the high grade underground type mineralization that Amex has become known for. So we'd basically be able to provide the best of both worlds, the high grade um, narrow vein type system and a big bulk tonnage system that would work very well in, in this gold environment in particular. Uh, next page. Uh, this is a comparative slide. Many of those that are on the call from the Abitibi have either been visited or worked at these mines in the past. Uh, and just what we're trying to show here is within roughly the same strike length, there's been 28 million ounces of gold uh, identified across from Muska to Agnico's Laurent. We also want to show that at depth here, these deposits have a lot of potential. Agnico has defined reserves down to over, over four kilometers. I am gold is below three kilometers on the Westwood. So what we know is that you can build very sizable ore bodies that go down to very significant depths. Uh, next page, please. So this is the Eastern gold zone. And this is the discovery that really catapulted Amex um, upwards in the, in the direction that we've been going. Um, it's comprised of the high grade zone, which is the one that trends a little bit to the Northeast and the Denise zone, which is the Southern panel, the three different blocks um, from which we put out news about two weeks ago that got me very excited, especially when you look at it with the high grade zone and Denise basically side by side. Uh, it can get very exciting very quickly. Uh, next slide, please. This is the high grade zone. So this is the one that's really been um, pushing Amex forward. Most of 2019, Amex focused on the upper portion to the right or to the west of that Lake Diabase Dyke. We defined it at roughly 25 to 50 meter centers, but most of 2020, we've been focused on the depth extension and the significant upside and blue sky potential. Um, in my eyes, the, the depth extension is already proving to be uh, richer. Strike length seems to be increasing. Uh, widths are increasing. So the old saying that, that these deposits get better and bigger at depth, in this case, looks like it's coming uh, to fruition. And if you go to the next page, because it's so hard to see here, um, we've highlighted some of the results over the past few years. Um, some numbers like 14.5 grams over seven meters, 31 grams over 8.5, uh, 11 over 10. On the other side, 393 grams over 1.7 meters, uh, 32 over 5.9, uh, 56 over 8.5. And if you take a look back at the Amex press releases over the past two years, we consistently put out these very impressive high grade substantial width results. And what we've been doing is consistently putting them out across the entirety of the high grade zone. So it's shaping up to be a very consistent, very high grade, uh, very attractive gold deposit. Next slide. And this is Denise. So the Denise zone is just to the south of the high grade zone. Um, this one, is, it's a bit funny. So we drilled it uh, in 2017. We drilled a few holes in 2019. And a lot of the holes that we drilled, we didn't even sample uh, in its entirety. And our last press release put out some very substantial, very broad uh, intercepts. And some of the numbers here include 115 meters of 1.4 grams of gold, 189 meters of 1.07 grams gold, 50 meters of 2.12 grams of gold, and 100 meters of 1.01. .01. Also, at depth here, we've drilled up to seven grams per ton over 32 meters, with a high-grade core of 40 grams over 5.5. So not only do we have uh, bulk tonnage type um, intercepts up near surface, but at depth here, we're also hitting some very high grade uh, substantial intercepts. So this could be uh, very significant for the company um, and coupling it with that high grade zone, uh, we think is going to be very, very attractive. And I, I know that many shareholders and, and a few different mining companies have uh, conveyed that interest as well uh, since we put that release out. Next slide, please. We've completed metallurgy work already on the Eastern Gold Zone. The results were spectacular. Um, the grades were better than expected on the backs of using a very large core um, drill hole, PQ size drilling. 
Um, our recoveries were spectacular, better than 99%, both gold and silver, using gravity flotation cyanide. We recently reran the metallurgical work just using gravity and cyanide, and results were still stellar, better than 98% gold, better than 93% silver. So this is very much a free gold system that will work in any type of milling environment. Next page. Avance. This is the Gretien Golds. Oh, sorry. Well, back one. Um, the Gretien Gold Zone. This is about 1.5 kilometers to the west of the Eastern Gold Zone. Uh, it was discovered in the 1990s. Uh, last summer, MX reinterpreted all of this data. Uh, we've drilled over 15,000 meters into the Gratian and Grey Cat Zone since. We've had some spectacular results. Next page. Including 1.5 meters of 67 grams, 4.2 meters of 17 grams, 4.9 meters of 27 grams, and 14.6 meters of 16 and a half grams per ton. And this is in what is historically a low grade um, large system. And the next page, please. Um, basically what this is, is it's three major lenses that stretch over one kilometer. And our objective here is to drill off a near surface open, to, open pit type resource down to about 250 meters vertically. And then as we've done on the left side of this map, start testing uh, for higher grade shoots down at depth that would be amenable to underground mining as well. So lots of opportunity on the Gratien zone. Uh, next slide. Is the Grey Cat Gold Zone. This is MX, uh, MX's most recent discovery. Uh, it was made last summer. It's a bit further to the north of the Peron Fault. A little bit different style of mineralization here. Um, numbers are, are broad, widespread, near surface, but we also have some high grade mineralization that can be quite exciting. Um, numbers here include 34 meters of 1.9, 27 meters of 3.4, 28 meters of 1.2, six and a half of nine, and 2.7 of 24 grams per ton. Next page. This one starts right at surface. We've defined it uh, pretty well down to about 300 meters vertically. And what we're starting to do is test way, uh, significantly down at depth, uh, drilling around the 500 and 600 meter vertical level, looking for high grade underground type shoots. Uh, next slide, please. Um, in addition, we have a lot of exploration potential. Um, like I mentioned, our major focus is on that wedge in the center of the screen. So in uh, November of 2019, last year, we flew a very high resolution magnetic survey over the entirety of that wedge of Riley, um, identified a number of really significant structures. We are very excited to drill them and we're allocating 20,000 meters uh, solely to regional grassroots exploration, which is more than most exploration companies drill uh, in a whole year. Uh, and we're in the middle of a 300,000 meter 10 drill program. We're very excited about the potential here and we've got a, a fantastic geological team and, and we've got a lot of confidence that we'll make another discovery uh, on the MX property in the very near future. Next slide. And basically just in summary, so it's 100% it's a land package, uh, lots of potential for exploration. We've got a team that has bought, sold, found, financed, and developed mines in the past. We think we're onto something very significant at Peron. Sorry, I just can't see. Um, oh, I'm getting chatted out. We've got uh, a $30 million exploration program underway. We've got 10 drills on site, uh, which is one of Canada's bigger exploration programs run by a junior. And we've got a really good share structure and we are very much looking forward to the future. And I'm going to take some questions. I saw some chats pop up. Um, target for ounces for MX. Um, I can't really tell you, but it's we're, we're looking for something very sizable, significant. Um, if you take a look at the other significant areas throughout the Abitibi, 
Um, there's many multi-million ounce projects and we're targeting something uh, very significant and um, somewhere in that realm. Like what, so like a five million ounce, like or seven million ounce, like Falco or? Maybe I'll, like, maybe I'll, I maybe I'll actually, uh, maybe I could butt in uh, as I'm not uh, an officer director and don't know any information, but I could tell you that the market, most analysts uh, in Toronto and in, and in Montreal are suggesting that this should be easily three to four million ounces, potentially uh, four to five million ounces. And that's, again, not on behalf of the company. That's me saying that personally. Okay, thank you. There are, there are analysts that reflect those thoughts. There's four different groups that all have very similar numbers. Um, the analysts that cover it are uh, PI Financial, uh, Canaccord, Laurentian Bank, and Industrial Alliance. We have Eric Lemieux on the line as well, who also covers us. So yeah. we've got a, a very broad group of people that are, are coming to a general consensus. And, and I just saw a question from Eric. what's our consensus in terms of uh, price-wise? What's our consensus? In terms of target price, I think the average yeah. price right now is about $4. $4.25, I think, across the board. Okay. Canaccord was the most recent one to launch, and I believe they put a $5.25 target uh, price. Five or five twenty-five, but overall, it's it's significantly higher than where we're currently trading, which usually is a good sign. Okay. I see. And then I saw a question from from Eric about yeah. NSRs. Uh, yes, there are NSRs across the property, ranging from two to two and a half percent, payable to uh, different groups. There's no royalty company owning them. Or There is no royalty company that owns any of the royalties, no. Okay. I see Eric has a comment right now. Mm -hmm. Want to comment on this or, okay? Yeah, sure, it's like, he, it's Eric. Eric says four deposits, minimum half a million ounces each, gives you two million ounces, two million ounces uh, minimum from where we sit. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there, there's lots of, there's tons of research out there. We've got all of our full database on our website and anyone can go download it, review that in detail. Um, we're very transparent. We're very excited. We think that this is big, is real, and is of significant value um, and definitely has multi-million ounce potential. And, and that's what we're working on, um, on drilling out right now. Okay. Okay, thank you. Merci, Kelly. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and on to Richard. Yeah. But, uh, Luke is going to change uh, the presentation. Luke? Yeah, while he, while he does that, um, let me just uh, say hello to Aaron, uh, who's on the line. Aaron Stone's going to be joining us as a, as a new geo for Generic Gold, he's uh, currently, or was working up on the MX project uh, for one of the main uh, contractors that we have there doing the drilling uh, on MX, who's also uh, going to be doing field work and drilling for uh, for Generic Gold, but I'll get into that. But uh, but Aaron is on and welcome. He, he also has spent a lot of time on MX projects. If anyone has some questions, I'm not sure he can answer them, uh, but there he is. Welcome, Eric. Hi everyone, uh, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, yeah, as uh, as Richard was saying, I've recently been uh, working on Perron for the for the last uh, four to six months. So I was going to say uh, before that uh, all the geos up there, uh, all we all think the same consensus is a hundred percent absolutely going to be a mine someday. So just depend uh, depends who who it ends up being. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, moving on from uh, Amex onto generic and uh, and QCX as well now and uh, very excited to be on board. Uh, so yeah, thanks Richard. Thanks. So may maybe I'll just give, uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, it's coming. We're up and going, but I, but I will give just a, a quick uh, kind of overall. So so generic gold is is uh, early stage, uh, cashed up with some, some interesting projects that, that we'll go through shortly um, and really just been put together 
previously in the Yukon, uh, it's had some projects which I'll discuss very briefly, but only recently uh, acquired some assets uh, in, in the same area as Amex. Just recently announced yesterday some additional projects which I'll take you through, but um, I just want to give you a little bit of color on myself. I've only joined the company as the CEO in the last uh, two months. Uh, I joined after uh, this project was uh, the projects in, in Quebec that we'll discuss just after they went into the company. I was a shareholder of Generic before, and, uh, and before that spent uh, almost 20 years with a, a venture capital fund, uh, Pine Tree Capital, some of you might know, um, but spent, uh, spent 15 years there, and uh, we owned you know, assets all over, all over the world. And all over Quebec, and and one thing that we learned, uh, or certainly that I learned, is you, we always look for good management teams, um, strong board of directors and, and investors, and as well as good projects. And so, when these assets came together, um, I was already a shareholder, and they they asked me if I wanted to get more involved. And I said, well, with this gold environment, with these projects, and and where they're situated, uh, with the board, um, and with the financing that we've completed, uh, almost seven million dollars. Uh, we're in great shape, so it's a pretty exciting project, and uh, and I'm happy to be involved myself in it. Um, Kelly was previously the uh, the CEO when it was a Yukon Gold story several years ago. He's remained on the board, so he has a a bit of information about the uh, about our new projects in Quebec as well as about the Yukon. Um, in case there's some technical questions, but uh, as I go through, you'll see it's it's pretty early days for us. Um, but anyway, uh, a good time to hear the story. So if we can uh, skip through, next page. Thank you, forward-looking statements. Next, next. Uh, just some basic uh, information. We've got just under uh, 60 million shares outstanding. Close today, just uh, around 60 cents, um, gives us a 36 million market cap. We've got uh, over six and a half million in cash. In addition, uh, similar to Amex, we have another 20 million warrants that are all in the money and bring in another $10 million uh, in cash. So uh, cash is not the problem. Uh, we had no difficulty raising money and don't think we will. Uh, going forward, we've got a very strong uh, investor base, including Eric Sprott um, and, uh, and some of the other guys who we'll talk about as we go forward. Next page. Uh, so I, so I'm, uh, I'm uh, the new president and CEO. As I discussed, I've, I spent years in, in, uh, in the resource investing space, ran a fund that owned you know, probably 500 names. Uh, we had a billion and a half dollars in, in assets in the junior space. and. Uh, and really, we're calling the shots in the in the on the venture market for many years, uh, for a variety of reasons. Mainly due to the the decline in the commodity cycle, things uh, fell apart. Um, but uh, we certainly uh, kept with that all the lessons that we learned and, and ready to to do it in a in a different way, in a smarter way. Uh, on our uh, our board is is Victor Cantori, who's obviously uh, the man behind Amex. Um, I was also an early investor in Amex and have been a follower of Victor's for many years. Uh, he does uh, some excellent work and really stays with something and builds something. And I'm happy to join him as the, as the president of this story. So uh, next page. Uh, Kelly, as I mentioned, is also a, a director, former um, CEO of the company when we had the projects only in the Yukon. Uh, he's staying on as a director, particularly uh, for his expertise now uh, on Amex and, and on the area in general. Uh, the last director is Nathan Tribble, who spent years working uh, under Eric Sprott. Um, he's a geologist, very well-respected guy, um, and, uh, and so he's, uh, he's happy to be a part of it. So really, it's a, it's a very strong, small technical board, uh, very small management team at this stage. I mentioned we've, we're just bringing Aaron on board and boosting our technical staff. Um, aside from that, we're generally using the same team, the Laurentia team that Amex has used for all their drilling and all their all of their uh, work on the ground. Uh, and we'll build it up fairly uh, aggressively from a work perspective, but slowly from a G&A perspective. Uh, we've all learned by running other companies that uh, that G&A needs to be controlled even in, even in bullish times such as these uh, for gold. So next page. So uh, I'll just uh, mention the Yukon projects. I don't want to get into them, but uh, we do have some 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 older Yukon projects. 
that were put in the company about five years ago when the when the Yukon was exciting. Uh, we had some good relationships and we were able to put together some interesting assets. Um, right now, they'll probably we've gotten some this some heightened interest in the Yukon recently. Uh, we have received a few offers for some of the projects. So, in, in the more likely outcome for them is that they'll be uh, vended out to to others uh, before we work on them. Uh, having said that, um, we we do own them now, and we'll see. We'll try and get the most value out of those assets. Uh, the focus has been uh, on the left side is the is the new Belle Bays project, uh, which we just picked up, uh, twelve and a half thousand hectares. Uh, in the same area as 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 MX is, and uh, you'll see uh, on the next slide, please. Uh, we are situated uh, directly uh, beside the Peron property of MX. All of the same benefits that uh, that Kelly discussed with respect to MX will apply to us. Uh, we have the same exploration team. We obviously have the same uh, the same proximity in terms of availability of of, of work. Uh, a workforce, we have the availability of power, of roads, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, clearly one of the best areas uh, in the world to work, uh, which is no surprise to all of you. I think most of you, if not all of you, are, are in the Belle Provence, so you're, you're well acquainted with the benefits of being there. Um, next page. Uh, so we've just picked up uh, this, the new project, which is called here as the North Block. Uh, we just announced that yesterday. The original project that we put in was the three pieces being the west block, uh, the center block, and the east block. Um, you can see we're uh, uh, adjacent to uh, what Amex, uh, where Amex is and their discovery. Um, and we're fortunate enough to, uh, to pick up that additional ground on the north block. Um, and we think that there's other ground both to pick up uh, in the near term uh, in the area. And there's also some possibility that there's others uh, who have interest in our ground and we might be able to find a way to have some of our ground worked on without a direct cost uh, to us. Uh, what's interesting is we've quickly accumulated uh, what we think is probably the largest land position uh, in the area. Uh, we're certainly larger than, than Amex is and uh, some very prospective uh, ground here, uh, obviously around you know, all, the, all the highways, all the power, everything, uh, including the, the old Normantel mine. Uh, all the same benefits that uh, that Amex has. Uh, next page. Uh, so uh, again, Norm Mattel, I, I don't think I need to get into it other than we all know it's a, it's a great jurisdiction and uh, and we have the contacts um, to get work done uh, effectively, quickly and, and cost effectively. So next page. Um, look again. I mean, what's what's attractive? What's most interesting to us about these these projects that got picked up is is you you all I'm sure are aware that this area historically is is built on VMS, um, uh, a variety of metals uh, almost exclusive to gold uh, historically. What Amex has has opened up is is a direct gold play, um, something that doesn't rely on on gold as a byproduct. And therefore, you know, really turn the model on its head. Uh, we've now gone in and, and looked at some of this ground, and notwithstanding that some of these historical faults uh, have have only had VMS showings, and you could see from the the map here. I'm not sure if you could see the uh, if it's blown up enough, but I, I believe you'll all get a copy at some point. Um, but the silver, copper, zinc, and nickel showings are are all throughout our project. Um, what we find interesting is as the two uh, as the two folds. Uh, as they, the two faults open up uh, on the Amex property, we could see where the, the four yellow dots are. Uh, we have a similar uh, type of structure down running through our, our center block um, and has some people quite interested. And so after our initial work program, which I'll, I'll talk about shortly, um, we wouldn't be surprised if we see some interesting, uh, some interesting goal results there. Fundamentally though, the point is that this VMS area has really not been tested for gold. Uh, and Amex has broken that door open for not just for us, but for all of those in the area. Um, and we think we're we're fortunate to have a great uh, a great land package and and are starting work aggressively on it. Uh, next slide. 
Yeah, again, this is basically the same, the same general point. Uh, we come across uh, the norm itself faults primarily on, on, all, of the, on all of the blocks uh, other than the west block, uh, which is interesting because it's, it's contiguous to Amex's uh, Peron project um, and, and obviously the norm itself mine. Uh, so, you know, it completely open in terms of what we'll, what we'll find there. Um, we'd be quite surprised uh, if we don't find anything there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure there's much else to suggest there. Uh, next page. Uh, so right here is our plan, uh, which is important. So uh, we've just picked up the projects in the last, uh, in the last eight weeks. Uh, we've quickly uh, gotten Laurentia, who are the, the main guys that have done the work on Amex, uh, lined up. Uh, they are coming through with uh, high resolution uh, drone magnetics. They're doing some airborne VTEM uh, and other uh, geophysics and, and prospecting uh, work on the ground. Uh, we hope to have uh, some targets and, and drills turning by Q2 2021. Uh, which is, you know, given COVID and given the seasonality, uh, we think is a, a reasonable time frame that gives us, uh, you know, a few months to get the work done, uh, pick those targets, and uh, and get in there. Um, importantly, while while we're waiting and while these programs are starting, uh, we have been uh, we've been quick at, at building the land package. As I said, we just announced that the North Block yesterday, um, and uh, I think we've got a few other. Uh, We've got some other plans, uh, let's say, um, that will see us uh, both build our space and uh, and find some interesting partners to uh, to get the space uh, drilled out and, and explored as effectively and quickly as possible. Uh, next slide. Uh, this j very just very briefly on the Yukon. I mean, uh, they they are interesting projects um, that that have some value. Um, the uh, one of the projects is right beside um, uh, Kamenak, uh, which was taken over uh, the coffee project. Um, that's so uh, of obvious interest. Um, the other one is is right beside Victoria Gold, which is the largest. Uh, you know, I'll call it uh, junior, although Victoria's of some size now. But the but the nearest term producer, they've only been in production for a few months. We literally uh, about that ground. Um, and and there's some there's some definite interest back up in the Yukon recently. Uh, there's uh, there's plans for a new uh, rail line that's going to go from um, from Alberta across, uh, breaking out into Alaska. Uh, that's going to provide some interesting um, interesting possibilities for this space, and uh, and we'll see uh, what happens. Um, next slide, please. Sorry, thank you. Uh, that's okay, you can skip to the next slide. Um, next slide. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's just uh, recap the highlights. Uh, we've obviously uh, accumulated a large land position uh, very quickly in an excellent jurisdiction. Uh, we've got some shareholders, not just Eric Sprott, but, uh, but uh, a very strategic board, including Victor Cantore, um, some strong investors, uh, myself included in that. I also uh, purchased another million shares when I joined the board, uh, or sorry, when I joined as CEO. Um, we've got six and a half million uh, in cash um, and, uh, and some very exciting uh, gold projects, prospectivity, the VMS is obviously still perspective for us, um, tight capital structure and, uh, and really early days for us. Um, early days, I think in this cycle as well, gold is, you know, bouncing, you know, uh, back down 1900 ish, but uh, I think we're very early days. This is very reminiscent of, of 2003 and four. Uh, and I think that, you know, the gold price is going significantly higher uh, projects like this project, uh, with this, you know, with the base that we have, with the strong support that we have, we think it's, uh, it should be a very exciting, uh, exciting few years for us up ahead. Um, I'm going to jump right into these questions. Um, question is what was the initial cost of acquisition 
on both Amex and GGC Gold projects. Uh, and then Kelly, are there any other metals in the drill holes? Uh, I'll just uh, throw it that GGC was um, a few million dollars, mostly in shares, uh, it was our acquisition costs. Um, and then Kelly can answer for Amex. Yeah, I believe, I think it was four and a half million shares of generic and, and 300 grand or so, uh, and, a, and a royalty. And then the, the newest deal that we did was, I think, $200,000 dollars cash and 2.25 million shares and then yeah. mx was actually picked up way back when 1997 or 1998 it was an option deal um essentially a negligible uh, amount of stock in this in this current position um but it, it's been held as a legacy legacy project for over 20 years now um in terms of other metals in the drill holes it's a it's a funny gold system it's it's really dominated by gold there's very little arsenic, or essentially no arsenic, uh, very little mercury or no mercury, uh, no real antimony. Um, in terms of potential base metals, there's a bit of zinc, uh, a little bit of copper, a little bit of silver, but otherwise it's, it's dominantly just quartz veins with gold. It's, it's really interesting. And Kelly, maybe uh, I'll let you answer the question uh, just how many exploration companies are active in the Norman and Sal area? You might have a better sense and then I'll answer the rest. Yeah, so there's, um, there's the, the one that's active right now is, well, there's a few, but the, there's a junior called S or Star Peak. I think it's S-T-E is the symbol and they're, they're about a 60 or $70 million market cap. They've done the, in the market done very well and they're, they're active in the area. Uh, I am gold is actually active in the area. They've got a property to the east of the GGC projects. Uh, Osisco Metals has a proper or two properties there. I'm not sure how active they are with them. Um, further to the east, there's a number of active projects to the north. Um, you have the Vior Ethos Gold project. Um, a, a new company, BMAX Gold, uh, has the King Tut project in the area. Um, so it's it's really starting to heat up. There's there's a lot of activity uh, in the area. So Serge, you guys can get some more contracts. Yeah, uh, pretty this is pre pretty pretty active. But I think uh, what's interesting is we have uh, generic has the one of the largest land packages and, and quite a healthy uh, a healthy balance sheet, um, bigger than most of the others at this stage. Um, so we'll see where we go. Let me just uh, answer back some of these questions. Uh, our program for the fall for GGC, as I said, is, is basically getting everything ready uh, for a drill program as soon as possible. So we'll have some sampling done, some geophysics will be done, we're flying some VTEM, uh, all of the basic work. Most of, most of the area uh, on, our, uh, on all our ground uh, has had very little exploration work in the past, um, which, is, uh, which is exciting for us. And uh, just sending people walking um, we expect will yield some some good results for us. So, uh, notwithstanding, there's no drilling for for a few months. Uh, we still think there should be some 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 interesting results that come from it um, in the short term. Um, then, uh, one of the questions is uh, about the uh, the North Block um, and saying uh, not really drilled. I'm not sure what you're saying there, but the question is what why was Amex not keen to pick up this land package. Well, quite frankly, Amex wasn't in the running for this land package. Uh, we picked up this land package um, without Amex's, uh, you know, we, it was not offered to Amex, um, at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, we were the ones who had the inside uh, inside track on it. Um, although- And, and the, other, the other commentary on that one is, is Amex is very focused on the Beaupre uh, Rylite. We think that's that's where our bread and butter is. So that's that's the major focus, and it, it, we've never really looked at um, acquisitions uh, because we think we've got the tiger by the tail what, and with what we have, and don't really see much of a value add um, on the other side of the fence. Yeah, um, I, and I'll, the next question or another question here that I see, and I apologize if I miss some of them, just write them again, but. Um, other than using Laurentian consultants, the question is what other synergies with Amex can we point to uh, that will allow lower exploration costs uh, or accelerate discovery? And, you know, the, the obvious one is, is both Kelly and Victor's involvement 
uh, on the on the board. Uh, they'll be uh, well aware of of every step that we take uh, in terms of you know everything from housing uh, to drilling companies. The other obvious benefit is is bringing Aaron on board, uh, who spent uh, quite a bit of time on the MX project and is is well appraised of the area. Um, we think that uh, you know when a rock comes out of the ground uh, between Aaron and, and Kelly, we'll have quick insight that that others just won't have. Uh, even if they have some some interesting drill results, they might not be able to appreciate as quickly or or know where to follow up the drill hole, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there's some 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 real benefits um, to the team that we've put together um, to benefit from the MX uh, the MX ground and, and their and their amazing work. Oh, and then I have one for um, for Eric Lemieux. I saw I, I skipped over your question there, but it was about the um, Beaupre block and the Demolais and and the the whether or not the same units they're not the the bull prey is a it's an erratic it doesn't fit in in the stratigraphy anywhere else within the um within that break it's it's been thrust from both angles um geochemically it's different um but there certainly are some some really attractive uh volcanic sequences in in the north block as as well as the um the original acquisitions as well The question about uh, where do we see the gold price in 2021? Um, Kelly, I'll let you answer, but I, but I will give my two cents. I mean, I'm, I'm quite famous, or at least I tell myself I'm famous for having convinced guys that the gold price was going to go to where it went to the last cycle. Uh, I remember having arguments at two and three hundred dollar gold price telling people that it was going to go to 500 and they said, you're crazy. And I said, well, it's going to go to 500 in the next, you know, three months or six months and then it's going to go to it's going to go to a thousand dollars and it was so impossible to get people to understand what you were saying um you know i'm a big believer in in, in macro trends this is purely a, a super cycle whatever the rationale is whether it's whether it's covid inflation whether it's whether it's chinese growth whether you know pick your reason uh in my opinion you just have 12 to 15 year super cycles we're overdue. Uh, we've, it's been a very tough uh, 10 years for the mining space, uh, particularly for the gold space. Um, and I think all the, all the factors have lined up. I think we're significantly higher uh, going forward. Uh, 2021, I mean, that's a, that's a crapshoot, whether it's, you know, whether we're 3,000 next year or, or, or 3,000 the year after, I don't know. Uh, but I do know that we're probably 10,000 or 8,000, uh, if not higher than that you know, five years or eight years from now. So we've got a long way to go. Um, and I think uh, we're in a great shape, both both Amex, and I'm a big shareholder of Amex personally as well, um, and GGC with uh, with any success. Kelly, you want to give your gold price? Hey, all I can say is all of my personal stock portfolio is 100%, uh, actually not 100%, 99% gold. Uh, with a little bit of uranium, thanks to our, our friend on the phone here. So I'm, I'm obviously very keen on it. Uh, and then there's another question from, um, from or comment from, from Eric Lemia. Um, Focus builds expertise, Peron's exciting development project, lots to work with. Um, and he thinks that the North Block has tracks of rocks similar to the Bull Prey Block, great acquisition. I'll, I'll accept the praise and I'm sure Richard um, is happy to hear that too. Yeah, we're happy we picked it up. And and what's what's exciting is that uh, you know we think that the 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 gentleman that uh, that took mostly shares uh, in addition to Stokem is because they uh, they see the future for for GGC as well. Uh, these weren't guys who were uh, walking away from uh, running away with a few dollars. They were quite happy to to take uh, take stock and and quite happy to be a part of, as a shareholder in, in what we're building. Um, so we're really excited. And most people actually on this call probably know, um, so we actually acquired it from Rem Remy Belanger and Pierre Gervais, uh, both of Rouen, and most people in the Quebec mining industry know those guys. So um, they're, they're now big shareholders of, of GGC and hopefully we can all make a lot of money together. Guys, I have a hard question here. Which one do okay. you I'm a shareholder in both, but for our people listening tonight, which one do we buy? Both? 
That's a tough one. You, you have, you have. I, I can tell you that uh, Ke um, there, Kelly there, and I could both speak with our with our portfolios. We both own both. Okay. Uh, it's it's important to have both because uh, one is a little obviously further on in the development scale, uh, and and one is earlier stage. But you, you really want to have exposure to both sides of that story. Um, and and these are two these are two great names. You know, with both strong balance sheets. Uh, great management teams and, and boards and supporters behind us. So uh, there's plenty of this. Pl We're able to be quite patient um, and build these things properly. I can recall uh, Amex when it was, uh, you know, I'm not sure how many of you were shareholders back then, but you were talking sub 10 cents not that long ago. Um, mm -hmm. But when you have a dedicated team, smart individuals, you stay with them and, uh, and you know that the discovery will come. Uh, and add to that uh, a gold market like we have now. This is like this is the time. This is it. Kelly, uh, that's my I will. Th I'll agree. <laughs> that's my last question for me. Uh, who did the property belong before? You know which one? Well, the uh, peril. Yeah, the peril. It you was know? Falcon Bridge. They had it so. Yeah, it was, it was Falcon Bridge way back when, um, because of, of Norma Tal, that was found in the 1930s. You've had every single major base metal operator that's ever worked in Quebec has okay. probably drilled a hole or two on the Perron project. Okay. And it wasn't until um, Falcon Bridge came in and started working on the, to the south of the Norma Tal horizon into the Bull Pride block that real, that significant gold was discovered. So, um, yeah, it was it was them that that Amex acquired the project from. Well, thanks everyone for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, keep your eyes out on both. There's going to be lots of news flow from from both companies, and and like Richard said, we're both big shareholders and of both, and are looking forward to big things. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Richard. Your last word. Uh, no last word. Thank you all. It's, uh, it's unfortunate we couldn't be there. We'll have to get a drink with you next time. The, the promise in November we're, we're planning to redo the show. On va refaire les événements uh, si on peut en avant. Alors, j'aimerais remercier tout le monde. J'aimerais remercier mes, mes partenaires. Thank you, uh, Kelly. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Aaron. Merci Thank beaucoup. You, Merci beaucoup. It was very Merci nice too. having you. Uh, if you need some information about the company, si vous avez besoin d'informations pour la compagnie, je pense que plusieurs d'entre vous ont, les, ont déjà les informations de nos présentateurs. Sinon, vous pouvez toujours demander à moi, Nathalie ou Luc, euh, des informations. Alors, merci beaucoup tout le monde. On va suivre les développements. Euh, moi, j'ai souvent fait des papiers sur Amex depuis euh, euh, 50 cents. Et puis, je l'ai qualifié de prochaine mine d'or au Québec. Bien entendu, ça va prendre plus de travaux, mais je pense que vous allez dans la bonne direction. Ceci étant dit, merci beaucoup tout le monde. It was great to have you. Merci encore et uh, stay safe. Merci. 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 Bonne soirée à tout le monde. Thank Bye. you, Mario, for putting this together. Thanks, everyone.